Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Strategy Guide, where we show you how to get strategic victories and tactical victories in your favorite video games. Hey guys, M12 Warthog here, your strategist for Strategy Guide, and today... We are playing some more Supreme Commander 2. This time, instead of continuing the Illuminate Campaign Strategy Guide, we are going to do a strategy guide about what you do in the Supremacy Game Mode of Skirmish. Well, actually, the online version, but I'm playing against hard AIs because I don't want to have to pause in between each video. Or pause to explain something to you and then get my butt kicked by an online player Well, I'm doing this and plus that would sort of hold up the game and if I was put on a team and all that stuff But for now, I'm gonna do a strategy guide last time I did a strategy guide for skirmish mode That was a 2v2 and I played as a UEF. I'm probably gonna do a free-for-all here Then um, probably I don't know, mix it up and do, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the Cybern one. Maybe I could do, maybe I could do a free-for-all on a map I don't frequently play on as a challenge. And then maybe I have something else in store later on down the line. But for now, let's hop into this. Right now, before we do anything else, this is a geothermal borehole type of supremacy. Rush timer is off, I don't normally do that. I only do that really to give the handicap to a uh, person who's on a team of one when we do 3v1s, but usually, usually I don't really care if I'm on the team of one, <laughs> mainly because I know that I'm going to kick butt. Uh, we got uh, three hard AIs, and let's start into this. Remember, I do not play against cheating level AIs because, well, they cheat. I am starting in location A, and anyone in location B, C, or D is an enemy. Now we are going to build multiple stations, research stations for faster points. This is actually quite true. Now for base setup, the structures, I, I like the UEF because they have good strong structures. They have a lot of variety. They have support with their um, artillery, which can support their... Um, um, other units that don't have such a long range, like their heavy point defenses, but our ground turrets or long range point defenses are so long they can hit them from far away, so they don't really need artillery to whittle down big guys before they get here because the turrets can do that themselves with their massive long range. So, you also may notice that if I were to go here, 200, 250... From the looks of it, once you start to upgrade things with your structures, they, you don't... It seems like you don't really get a whole lot of, um... Stuff to start out with, but, um... If you look at this, I it seems to me, in my opinion, that... Some of the buildings here cost a little bit cheaper. I'm not sure if it's the same as the UEF. But maybe that's just because I really don't play this, play as the Illuminant that much. Except for when I'm playing um, the campaign. But I do play it a few times just to familiarize myself with some of the stuff that they have in the... And what you need to know for this. And, well, at least enough to make this strategy guide. So, without further ado, let's see what else. Okay, so, for starters, I set up building... All mass extractors and all mass extraction sites. Now the next thing I'm going to do is make an air factory. Now the reason for this is because we have... It's much better to do this as an Illuminate than any other faction because Illuminate has a fighter bomber. It does not have a fighter and a bomber. They have one unit that is both. So it can provide air cover and ground cover. Which is good, because if you only build the land factory, chances are most of the units will either only be able to fight ground units and naval units if they're in range, except for submarines, or only air units. And that can be a bit of a problem. 
So what you want to do is set up one of those, get all the attachments. Intel is not necessary as you're going to have a giant radar in the middle of the base, which will pretty much alert you of everything you need to know. So what you need is the factory atom for tactical missile launcher, the air, anti-air turret, and the shield generator so that has its own defenses. Now we're going to take this and we're going to install a radar installation here. Now, now, another thing you need to know is that sometimes units or enemies will rush you early on. Yes, they're attacking me, but I'm not worried so much. Now, the reason for this is because this factory now has an add-on which is fending them off. Now, I do have to build some of my own, and I'm going to do that. Now, normally, when I play on this map, the main faction I play as, which I main UEF, to be honest, I set up a line of heavy point defenses here, and then back right behind it, a bunch of artillery emplacements and all that stuff. Well, to be honest, that's not going to happen because, you want to know what? I don't have any... I don't have any artillery. We're not playing as the UEF. I'm going to get two of those. And one of the more important things is by 20 minutes, because we're playing against hard AIs, you definitely want a nuke defense silo. Now, this is probably going to be easier to get if you are a Cybran, as your nuke defense silo and your nuke silo is in one structure. Whereas you have to build separate structures for each one. Though I'm not playing on nuking people, I usually do that when I want to shake up the um, standoff or the standstill that normally is occurring between two factions that are fighting and so forth. Other than that, that's the thing. Now, for this one, you definitely want to be able to set up shields when you when you get them for your units now the reason for this is because your turrets can't take that much damage your turrets cannot they're not heavy point defenses and cannot take as much damage as the uef but what they can do is be protected by shields and take things out from long range so you want to know what that's exactly what we're going to do when we unlock the shield generator at five Increases regeneration of nearby units. I might do that later, but right now we need to focus on getting more research. At most, we're probably going to get 12... About 12 uh, research stations up and going and 10 energy generators. Now, another thing, we need more AA because we're going to be constantly raided early on, which we currently are by maybe one or two at a time. But uh, it's definitely something we need to be aware of and stop because they destroyed our radar installation. And I have to make another one. Making it on top of the ruins or the rubble of uh, a previous building of the same type allows you to place it down and build it with re with the reduction in terms of cost for for resources. So if I build it on the ruins of my old radar installation, that reduces the amount of energy and mass because it automatically makes use of the stuff that's already there to help it build much faster. Now we have shield generators. Now what I'm going to do is build one. Now, we probably would need a little bit more mass to continue on. And that's definitely good because you can get a mass converter early on. It's actually quite easy to get that. Now, I'm here and I'm trying to find that this is the nuke defense silo. So what I'm probably going to do is get the mass converter, then buy this, and then go straight for the nuke defense silo as that's probably going to be the next thing on our list of priorities. Being able to defend ourselves against nukes is definitely a thing you want. You do not want to be nuked early on. Now another thing that you want to know is that your nuke defense silos do not detect, will detect all enemy nukes and shoot them down. Note, I said enemy. Your ally nukes you, you're screwed. 
Because they will not shoot those down. Now have a mass converter. Now what you want to do is definitely build one of these. This mass converter will definitely provide an useful supply of mass as you are very limited on where you can put your mass. If you take a bird's eye view of my base, you can see that there, or in other places, that there's very limited spots as to where you can place down mass extractors. But you can literally place down energy generators everywhere except for a mass extraction site. So, with that in mind, you can now start to make other things as well. Now I'm going to start making a land factory. Probably going to heavily rely on Air Force for defense of this base. And because you're very limited and a very narrow path is allowed for your troops to move maneuver on, it's pretty easy for someone to easily set up a line of defensive turrets or point defenses which can easily mow down your troops, especially if they're backed up by artillery if we have any UEF players. Now, I'm not sure which exactly factions we have because I haven't been paying attention to the type of uh, units that have been raiding us via the via through the air, but I'll start paying attention to that once I'm done building the basics of this base. So now what we want to do is I'm probably going to set this engineer to patrol and pretty much get all of this stuff when he's done with the building there. Now, like I said, research is very, very important. I'm making more research stations. Okay. Okay, let's see here. I need 10 for a nuke defense silo. Getting this early on is definitely gonna surprise people, because um, if you ever do a 3-on-1, and you have like a rush timer of 20, which is a common thing I've seen people do to give, uh, give the guy on the team of 1 a chance... They will have nukes by the end of 20 minutes, and you could easily be destroyed if you don't know what you're doing. Okay. How many is that? Four? We need five on this row. Okay, yeah, we're probably going to put... Make two rows of six of these right here. Okay. This should be... Our last... Energy generator for now. We'll build more if we need them. Now I'm going to set up a bunch of air units. And set up a shield... For our... Point defenses here are long-range point defenses. Should also put some AA here to protect this mass extractor, because that's very open to attacks. But really, you have to... But really, that's one mass extractor, and you really have to focus on the safety of your base early on, and building and making it stronger above anything else. It may be cool to have, you know, like... Experimental factories and all that stuff, but if you can't defend it, then there's really no point in making it in the first place. Now, you notice I'm not putting a shield directly next to these turrets here because the area of the shield border ends right there, so anything outside firing in will not be destroyed. Anything from the inside firing in will get, will take damage. Another reason I'm setting, I should start setting up AA here is that they're going to start to drop down enemy units right on top of, right in front of here, instead of right in the middle of our base where there's going to be more AA. Though we don't have a whole lot of that, trust me, we will make some later on. Now that we got our nuke defense silo, the next thing you want to focus on is going after 
um, upgrades that increase the amount of energy and mass that you get. That way you can build your things faster. And also training for your structures to provide a defense. Meanwhile, over here, I can now start the building, a repeat build, of this unit here if I want to. Okay. To move that there. Now what I'm going to do is immediately buy reduced cost. Now the reason why I'm buying reduced cost for our air units is because I said to repeat build. And it's going to, second it's done, it's going to start taking another set of 95 mass to make it. Although now it's 90 because I've upgraded it. Okay. Now I'm going to set up a line of these. If I ever need to make land units, I'll just make an air transport and drop them right here on the other side because this is going to be blocking our entrance. But it's also going to be blocking the enemy's entrance into our base as well. Okay. Now normally when I convert mass, I... Into energy, I try not to go below 10,000 energy. That way I can actually have some energy to spend on things. Such as queuing up two anti-nukes. Okay. Now's the point where I want to make another... Um, research station over here, and now we're gonna slowly set up more AA in this area. Okay. Mainly what I'm gonna do with this land factory, now that we have it up and running, is that I'm probably gonna make it have more engineers so that way we can pump out units more units as needed for this air factory or for um, making more turrets and so forth right now I'm gonna make a double layer shield now what that's gonna do is make two shield generators right next to each other and that way if one shield dies the other one's gonna pop up the other one's going to take its place, or it already is there to provide an extra layer of shielding for units. That way, they can still fire at the enemy without having to worry about taking much damage. I'm still going to keep an engineer here next to this for the sake of uh, making sure that they're all healed in case there's that one time that they do get break through the shields and they do take damage. Now, that won't be often... And that won't happen as often the more you upgrade everything. But that's just what happens. Okay, we need to move that there. I'm going to set this to patrol here. And that's going to start extracting... A whole bunch of mass from there. Now mainly what you want to do when you place down AA is have the highest concentration right here. Because when an enemy sends a direct path to tell you to attack them from either side, they're going to tell you to either come from this side here... This side here, or if they're the one directly across from you, right here. So having AA in place is definitely something you want because you can shoot easily shoot down any aircraft, whether it's just a landing, whether it's just a um, air transport, just making transport and land units right in front of you. You can sometimes, or most of the time, 
and shoot it down without any worries of um having to having to deal with the units that they drop. And also we have a better chance of shooting them down as a luminant than we do for um playing as the UEF because I'm not gonna spend most of my units on making a whole weird support grid that I that I normally make behind here with a bunch of shields and short range artillery which could easily destroy this. But here's the thing. We don't need that. The reason for this is because we have more turrets here. And if I wanted to, I could when we unlock it, or I already have one, tactical missile launcher, and I guess maybe having one or two of these near the entrance is also good because if they start to set up stuff over here, you can slowly chip away at it. It's like a weaker version of the artillery, I guess. It can only hit, like, it's only good at hitting non-moving objects, though. At this point... What I want to do is set up another research facility. Now... Now at this point, I'm going to set up a lot of things here. Now I'm going to set up so many things that it's not going to be easy to move lane units out of here, but we can always use air transports. Having this here, having all of these here is definitely a good idea. Okay. Also, shields to protect these things would also be good. And that's something you have to do early on. And that's not as soon as possible, but it's not really a priority. Because a, a small group of planes may be able to take down one turret. But it may be not so much if you like uh, set up like 10 turrets near there. Then they're going to shoot them down first. But still... You don't want to have to constantly have an engineer near the place healing your units as much. I'll still keep one there just in case, but you don't want to have to really worry about it so much, so I set up shields for these guys here as well. Okay. I'm going to have my ACU make another research station now. Those of you who are wondering why I'm doing uh, my ACU is because I want to get these fast, research fast as possible, which is why I'm doing it. Okay, we got mass. We got the mass upgrade. Now what we want to do is go up to the ACU, get the damage, then the radar, then the energy, and then the mass because now we're just going to increase our mass by a lot. But now what we want to do is go directly for core dump. Now, if we have core dump, that means if our ACU gets destroyed, it will, of course, make another one due to an escape pod feature that we have that we bought before that. But what it also means is that it won't blow up like a nuclear bomb when it gets destroyed. And that's something very important that you want to know. It's a very important thing if you're being attacked. Do you have core dump or not? Because then, if you don't, you're, you're, people will just attack that and go directly for that. No. And they won't hesitate to stop. They, they won't hesitate for anything. If they see your ACU, they're definitely going to go for it. On the, on the hopes that you did not get... You did not play smart and you did not get core dump. But... Or that you don't have it yet. Put a shield over here. Okay. Have two tactical missile launchers. That's actually quite good. Gonna set up a few AA over here because we don't have any, but they're not really attacking from here. 
And if they did, they run directly into my Air Force. I'm gonna move that there. Okay. So now comes the part where you realize that you may have one nuke defense silo early on, and that's quite good. But the thing is, you definitely want to have more. Maybe one here? Somewhere around here? One somewhere around here and, like, one in the middle. Like, one at the four corners and then one in the middle. Now, the reason for this is that your nuke defense silo has a very... Has somewhat of a limited range on where it can shoot down a missile. If it launched one directly here, this one in the middle probably wouldn't be able to be in range to shoot it down. Which is also something I've learned that if if you're trying to nuke an enemy base right in the middle and they have a nuke defense silo, shoot just outside of the base. You'll still do a lot of damage, but it won't get shot down. Okay. So, I bought some nukes for that one. Now, I'm probably going to have to wait until I can get some more resources to nuke the other one, but I think now is a great time to end this episode of Strategy Guide. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, take the time to leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below would be highly appreciated. And I will see you guys in another video.